Hey guys, James here again. This is going to be What If Takamichi was Te- Tehun Song. Tehun is the one of the supporting characters in the manhwa or webtoon called How to Fight or Viral Hit as you may know it. And it's it's a, it's a pretty good one, so you should you should read it. It's, it's really good. Now we can just let's go on to how Tehun would actually be. He's a pretty he's a pretty stoic guy, I could say. But he's not really too much of a like nice person. He's pretty rude, but I guess a decent like he's he's like a nice yet rude guy at the same time. Like he has his good moments, he has his bad moments, there's like a mixture of both. And well, the way I kinda thought he should he'd be able to do this is due to the fact that well he has had a bad experience with gangsters in their original um in the original story. Where I guess I guess they were Tohan's really a group of gangsters, more like just a group of delinquents, but as adults, they're gang, they're gangsters. And guess the group that they were messing with weren't really gangsters, but delinquents that took it too far. What they did was basically, basically kill one of his friends. With that, Tohan almost killed them all, and uh, he didn't kill any of them, but he beat them mostly to death. Almost to death. So, yeah. But, um, we can more or less move on to just how Takanichi would be like Tohan. So, yeah, also one thing, Taehyun's big, big as hell. So, like, he's, he's like, he's bigger than me, and I'm decently sized. So, Taehyun's, like, is, like, six, six foot three, six foot four. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so, also, this man's buff as fuck, and also practices all forms of Taekwondo that, that you can name. He, he, he uses them all. Plus, he was also a professional, professional fighter for a brief run of time. But, um, Takamichi, how he's like Taehyun. So, Takamichi, was a teenager, he's also well, pretty big. And he's bigger than Draken. Like, he's bigger than Draken. And Takamichi in this one would, would be half Japanese, half Korean. And, well, he has a cousin very similar to Taehyun that had died due to gangsters. And his cousin happened to be visiting Japan, messed with, beat up with a lot of gangsters, and these gangsters had killed him. This actually will lead Takamichi having a grudge to pick with a certain member of Valhalla, being Hanma. Hanma had beaten his cousin to death by catching him off guard. So Takamichi and Hanma will have a lot of beef later on. But Takamichi more or less refu- refuses to be around gangsters or delinquents, as he sees them as the same as the same kind of person. And in, in all retrospect, they can get their hands as well equally. Even if you're just a delinquent who starts to smoking, smoking cigarettes and messing, messing with kids, not hitting them, Takamichi will, 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 will without a doubt beat you to death if he wants to or feels like it. We move into the middle. There, he doesn't think of them as delinquents. He just thinks of them as random nerds wanting to be puff, not puff, wanting to, wanting to be tough. So he jokes around as their leader, and whenever they do get picked on, he solves it for them. But occasionally, they're decent. They're decent for someone, I guess, of their stature and attitude. Well, just considering who they are as people, he finds it funny that they're delinquents, just because they're actually decently. They're okay as people, so he allows them to not get beat up by him. But he does say that he's not, he's not, not their friend. He's just some guy that make, make sure they don't get beat up too severely. So talking, she did beat up did beat up Kiyomasa, like wait, with one go, he knocked him out. It was just, he he refused to let his friend go near guys like Kiyomasa after hearing Kiyomasa was in Tomon. And basically, he, he stopped hanging out with me in the middle once, once he, they began picking fights with kids that, have, that had gangsters in school. And coincidentally, in this one, Takamichi would be a bit older and actually have a few classes with Mitsuya, who he knows is a good guy, he just does, doesn't know Mitsuya's in Tomon. He doesn't know that yet. But, um, yeah, Mitsuya's actually one of, his, one of his preferred friends. Yeah, that he doesn't have many of. But as an adult... Takemichi more or less more or less runs a te- runs Taekwondo studio, and well, as a teenager he didn't know no didn't know Taekwondo. He was just really strong and like unnaturally strong. But as an adult he learned te- Taekwondo, and well now runs a do- now runs a dojo basically from about Taekwondo. And he's well as, if he uses as a teenager he'll be he'd be even more even more more more, more powerful, because as an adult he mellowed out a lot, which should result in him not being as physically strong or as tough. Which is the fact that as an adult, well, people can have connections that you never know of. But so again, teenagers, it's just teenagers teenagers are easier are easier to deal with. So yeah. When it comes to teenagers, he's tough. When it comes to adults, he's more or less like very level headed. But eventually Takemichi would still come across like like train tracks, and he does still about still hear about Hina being dead. But um eventually Takemichi, when he does end up just well obviously pushed on the tracks, he catches the guy who's about to who's about to push him. And it sucks the guy right across the jaw. This one isn't Akun. It's not Akun, because Akun still went to jail for stabbing Kiyomasa. 
because he helped, like, he, like, Takanichi like, like, helped them once, and then once Takanichi stopped helping them, Kiyomasa beat the ever loving hell out of them daily, to the point where Akun had killed Kiyomasa. And then now Akun's in, kind of on death row. So, yeah. He was a juvie and got put on death row when, when he was an adult. But, um, yeah. So Takanichi is just, just about to be pushed by some random guys. But then there's a group, because he had beat up a guy from Tomon, who tried to more or less break into the dojo, and not break in, but like go into the dojo and forage money, money out of Sakunichi. In response, like, Sakunichi broke his jaw with one simple kick. It wasn't even like a martial arts kick, it was just like a very just swift kick, kick to the chin, and it, not, and it broke the guy's jaw. But with that, they, they tried to push Sakunichi on the tracks, but he beats the hell out of every, every single one of them. And Wuhina was still his girlfriend in this one, so, yeah. But Takamichi's around, like, I guess, Kennedy's, Ken, Ken, like, 26 as an adult, so currently he's, like, 27. So, because he's a year older, but, yeah. Eventually, when he does, he does beat up all the gangsters, or delinquents, as he, as he calls them, he turns around, about to let them go, and suddenly, one actually hits him right in the leg, or tries to, with a baseball bat, but it breaks around his leg. Picks up the guy, but it hit him in the face, when suddenly, a piece of the broken part of the bat is shoved right into his leg, stabbing him. Kamichi would jump, like, just, like, pulls his leg up in pain, and suddenly he's punched, or pushed, right in the, under the tracks. With that, the fans hit him, and he's sent back to the past. Kamichi isn't too dumb to the point where he doesn't, like, realize he's in the past. Like, this is too vivid of a, of a memory to, for it to, well, be a memory. Pause real quick. So, Takamichi would nonetheless just proceed to just wander around with Yamagishi, Yamamoto, and Suzuki. Now with them, well, he does describe them, like describe them, but in a different way. Like Akun is was the quote unquote quote, leader until Takanichi began helping them, and he's just, he's a pretty pretty respectable guy. It's just it's a, it's a shame he's on death row. Then he talks talks, talks about Makoto, who's just a womanizer that can't keep his hands off his dick. And then Yamagishi is some nerd who thought without glasses glasses would make him a genius, but all he's all he's good for is being a delinquent encycl encyclopedia. And then with um with uh, who. Uh, Emoto, he's actually a good, good kid. Takamichi, Takamichi still knew him when they were kids. So, yeah. But, um, eventually with this, we can more or less move on to, like, um, this Takamichi when he is... I guess with the whole Kiyomasa thing. So, Takamichi does eventually end up, like, just fighting Kiyomasa's group. But Takamichi, well, he, as he's in the past, he hopes he can change it a lot. And it's the point where he actually he'll scare him to the point where Akun will never end up on death row. So Takanichi tells Akun and his friends to have to watch as he'll make as he'll make an example out of everyone there. And this Takanichi know, knows Taekwondo, he's a master at it, one of the best practitioners in the world currently. So when Kimasa ran Takanichi, Takanichi does a very swift roundhouse kick, and it knocks out Kimasa cold. That's for the rest of Kimasa's group, and by the time he's done, Kimasa had woken up. Kimasa starts to like, like grab like while he just crawl away, Takanichi grabs him by the collar. And being beating him half to death, and says if he ever goes near Akun again, or any or meet any Mizo middle, he'll kill him, and then go out and go after his friend's family as well, families as well. This Kimasa kind of help help piss himself and run off scared. And he abandons his friends. Takamichi wakes them all up, and they run off as well. But um, yeah. But eventually, we can just go on to like just when Takamichi meets Hina again. When he meets Takamichi, she's more or less glad to be dating Takamichi, who was kind of feared by every single school. But she makes her life a lot easier, but she kind of forgets it's because of Takamichi, not because she's a nice person. <laughs> like, not even guys at school hit on her, or she tried to be her friends, it's just mainly all girls, because they want to get close to Takamichi, or the guys are respectful to her because they don't want to get involved with Takamichi. Or they don't want to, they don't want to get a bad bad rep with Hina, which resolves, with, no, well, not resolves, it results in Takamichi coming to them. Because he goes to the same school as all of them. Eventually, he does end up hanging out with Hina for a bit. He and his mother does like Takemichi. Like, she had, she, had, she, had a mo she had a small crush on him when Takemichi was just hanging out with her. But, uh, yeah. But eventually, with this, we can go on to, like, Takemichi when when he shakes hands with Naoto. Well, first off, he does beat up the delinquents that are in the park. Like, he just pulls onto the side and just kick, like, delivers three fast kicks to the kids' faces. Send them all flying in the bushes. He talks talk, talk to Naoto for a bit. He's like, oh, yo, you're, you're Naoto Tashibana. Now, Naoto would nod, and Takamichi does tell him that, he, that he's Hina's boyfriend. Naoto then says, oh, you're dating, you're dating my jerk of his sister? Takamichi, Takamichi will slap the back of his head, but soft, softly knowing if he went all out, he may actually end up killing, killing Naoto, or actually just giving him a concussion. But Naoto and Takamichi just begin talking, and Takamichi, not Takamichi, Naoto's kind of shocked that Hina's dating such a cool guy. 
and so and so strong and well giant. But eventually, with this, Takamichi is able to, to still convince him now, now so that he knows going to die at this date, and he shakes hands with Naoto, being sent back to the future. When he wakes up, he wakes up, uh, he kind of wakes up just in his in Naoto's house, but there's a bandage on his leg, and well, he starts to stand up and says, oh, "Damn it!" He, he looks at his leg, think, oh, "I was I was really stabbed." And now, uh, and now, Naoto would say, "I'm surprised the bat broke on your leg." So, we, we we all saw things that we that we didn't didn't expect. Takamichi is immediately confused because he does recognize this is Naoto saying, uh, You. Uh, he points to his phone thing, thing, saying, Alive, how? And Naoto, Naoto would just say, Don't worry about it. The cops leave, and well, Naoto and Takamichi begin talking. Naoto is able to somewhat just, just basically like, think, like talk about how Hina, how Hina died and how it was done, done by Tomon. Takamichi she, she wants, to look, wants to look up Akun and, well, Akun's actually well. First off, he doesn't find out that something he's not on death row, and and I was like, oh well, well, why did you need to check? It's like he said, oh, originally from before you were alive, he was on death row, and it's mainly because he killed someone that I did, apparently didn't beat up hard, beat up hard enough. So I did, so I did just that, and I almost killed him. So yeah. Um, I guess we can just go on to like. Takemichi and going back to the past because he spent days researching, sure, but it's back to the past. And well, in the past, yes, um, hold up. Oh, yeah, this is the time where he would where have to fight in like the, I guess, the underground, not fighting circuit, but like the, I guess, the fight. Then he, he, well, first off, he used to hold like to head there, like saying, oh, head to the front underground fighting arena if you want your friends to live. But he had found a few, found a few people like few, like some of his friends like like he said he found 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 like like a Momoto, but didn't find Akun or anyone. He thought that he stayed home, but he didn't believe they were in a really on the underground fighting circuit or you know it's a it's a arena not arena but just like a fight like a fighting circle. And he believes it because he just realized that this could actually lead to Akun being dead, or well, dead but killing Kiyomasa. Now this he heads there. And well, Kiyomasa will be holding Akun. Akun at, at like kind of just knife point. And tells Takemichi to fight, fight whoever he says so. As, as he thinks Takemichi would say yes, his, his grip eases up on the knife. Then Takemichi would appear in front of him, grabbing his arm and climbing Kiyomasa's face right into the ground. It means pummeling Kiyomasa over and over and over. Point where Akun has to pull Takemichi off of it. Kiyomasa is beaten to the point where they can they can literally smell a certain thing coming off of him. It's not blood, but it's something from something from the lower regions. So, uh, yeah. Now, this it does, like, somewhat just scare everyone, but they all attack Takemichi as a group, and we're walking to a nerf track for Takemichi until it's like 10 minutes pass. At the end of the 10 minutes, well, they're all defeated. Every single guy there, and Takemichi isn't grazed even once. So, Takemichi just tells himself now to avoid Kiyomasa from now on. Now to would nod. Bruce is in his in pocket, pulling out, pulling out a switchblade, saying, and give me this. Then grab, grab, grabs Kiyomasa's blade, and then puts them both in his pocket, saying, Alright, go home. Akun runs off. And the next day, Takemichi would more or less go out to the next fighting circuit. As Kiyomasa was able, was able to tell, like, Peichon, not Peichon, not Peichon. He was able to tell Pachin and Peon that basically he was beaten up by some random delinquent. So he brings, like, at least on the third division, when he told Kim, when he told Pachin and Peon how strong this delinquent was, they brought most of the, most of the third division. Mikey and Draken happened to be like, like witnessing Pachin bring out most of their division, so they were watching from the shadows. Takemichi was called out. Well, he went there to see that Akun wasn't captured, but he was turned away when suddenly a guy a guy was in front of him with a baseball bat. Takemichi response just jumped at the guy, kicking him in the face as hard as he can, and the guy flying. And he he looks at he looks at Pachin, seeing his home on logo on his on his arm, saying, "Oh, hmm. what well, do I know about know about Manjo Sano? He favorite favorite roundhouse kicks, right?" Pachin says. You don't have the right. You don't have the right, right, right to address Mikey as Manjiro. It rushes at Takemichi, but suddenly he gets the same roundhouse. Pachin gets the roundhouse kick that Mikey does. That's from Takemichi. Takemichi would land, and well, everyone's in shock. Pachin was taken down that, qu- that quickly. Even Mikey's amazed. Pachin was one of the best fighters they had. Yes, this is actually a fact. But um, Osanai apparently beat the hell out of him, and uh, Osanai's kind of like pretty low tier, I guess, or not, because. Peon claimed that Pachin was one of the best fighters Tomon had. Then Peon stated to be stronger than Mitsuya, who stated to be pretty tough. And, well, 
That doesn't, that doesn't mean it makes Payon stronger than Pachin or, or makes Osunai strong as hell. So, one of the two. Like, either, either Payon is just underestimating himself because he doesn't, doesn't claim he's stronger than Pachin at all, or just Osunai is a whole different tier, maybe even Hanma level. No, not even Hanma level. He like, got taken out by Drakken in one hit. But, um... Well, his first shot was taken out, uh, taken out by Mikey, then got dazed a bit, so he didn't try to attack Draken when he got up, but... Well, I don't think he was out for that. Uh, screw this topic. This topic can be discussed in the comments. I don't care. So tell me your opinion. Who's stronger? Or is Osanich really strong, or is Pachi I, I, I actually weak? Who knows? All right, move on. So, Takmichi more or less faces the third, divi the third division, taking them all down. Even Payon. So, when Payon will rush at Takemichi, he basically, basically dodges Payon's first punch, and hits Payon right in the gut as hard as he can, making Payon throw up and pass out. This again takes, takes down everyone, everyone as fast as he can. By the time he's done, he's standing on top of a pile of guys, or not standing, but sitting, and looks at Manjo saying, oh, you're the one I smelt over there. Draken can't but laugh at Takemichi, saying, so you really are strong, huh, Hanigaki? And, well, Takemichi knows who they are, well, not, not, well they know who, who he is through, through Mitsuya. Because Mitsuya, like, first off, like, like, he, like, um, what's it? Uh, how did I mess up Pachin's name? Mikey had, had heard about Pachin heading towards a certain school, with Kiyomasa, and, well, well Mikey had, Mikey knew Mitsuya had there, headed there, not headed there, but, but goes to school there. Then he asked me and Mitsuya about it, and he's like, oh yeah, we have a really strong guy here by the name of, by the name of Hanagaki. He's, he's, he's one of my friends. So they wanted to see how strong Hanagaki really was. But he's strong enough to take down most of, the, most of their division with barely even getting hit. In case he doesn't get hit in the leg with a baseball bat, or had to dodge a hit, or get punched on the side. But this man's so durable, it doesn't really affect him. He yeah, guess who they are, and then there's, there's Mikey closer saying, Oh, you're Monjuro. You're really short. Draken steps up to Takemichi, steps up, steps up to Takemichi not realizing that Mike, not Mikey, but realizing, not realizing Takemichi's taller, taller than him. So Takemichi, this one's the same height as Tehun. Sorry about that. Up, up. All right, so Draken's more than intimidated by someone being this tall compared to him. Like, yeah, there's a few guys. Like, I think, I think, I think, I think, like, like, like Mucho or Muso maybe maybe taller than him. I forgot if it's Muso or Mucho, but in terms of translations, it's spelled like M U C H O U or just M just M U T O U. But I don't care. You should figure figure this out real quick. All right, so Muto is six foot five, and if anything, the tallest would be, like, I guess Muto's 6'5", Hanma's 6'4", so around the same as Takamichi currently in this one, and this what if not in canon, he's like a whole foot taller than him. Draken 6'1", then, uh, fuck. Okay, never mind, screw it, I don't care. But, just to put it in respect, in retrospect, fuck, I'm dumb. <sighs> so, we can go on to Takamichi, who ends up, I guess, just like... First, Mikey invites him to Tomon. Takamichi would say no, but does realize that well, he, he can prevent from he can prevent Mikey and Kasaki from meeting, so to say. So he agrees, but he has like he has what he gets out of it. And my Mikey would basically, would basically say he'll know soon. Like, like ta 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 Takamichi just says like, he says that Takamichi will know soon. Takamichi can't help sigh and walk away. But then this one Takamichi doesn't doesn't look like Sehun. He just he's just as tall as him. It's and buff, but. He more or less just wear like wears like a basic long like a long basic like basic black pants, high tops, long sleeve button up, and his hair is the same. It's just all black and down. Like his like his hair just kind of swings down how it does as an adult. But um, we can just go on to like um, this one Takamichi Misunato again. He heads back to the future, and then when he heads back to the future, uh, hmm, what else happens in the future? Fuck, I forget that. Pause. All right, so before Takemichi has heads back to the future, like, like him and Hina are still about to go on a date, and then, well, when she doesn't slap Mikey, more or less, she, she knows Takemichi can handle himself, but being kind of just make, kind of like making fun of Mikey, or kind of like just yelling at him, like, like guess, like, uh, how do you say it? Scolding him for turning to her dragging Takemichi out of class. Is his own, like, not against his will, but just dragging him out of class, saying education is important for someone his age. Mikey and Draken kind of just being like testing Takemichi by, by basically like, making fun of him. I'm making fun of him, but like making fun of Hina and kind of trying to intimidate her. So like, Mikey swiftly did a roundhouse kick and stopped right, right, right before he reached Mikey's temple. Which shocked Draken because Mikey didn't even react. Mikey didn't even see it coming. But Draken, before he can even say a word, like I said, Takamichi's fist is right below his chin. And Takamichi, he just said, 
Ted try to try it again, and he'll not he'll knock them both out cold. Mikey came up with gulp, and then walked back. So, yeah. Hmm. So now we can just go on to, like, talking to you about the future. Um, they still investigate, investigate, um, uh, they still investigate the death of, not the death, but they investigate Akun. They eventually are able to track him down. And when Takenichi enters the, um, enters the, guess the club, well, he sits down, and, well, he's able to smell something that he doesn't like. Turns around, and then says, oh, so, so you're the one wearing that gross-ass hair gel, huh? Same, same, same as, same as, as when you were a kid. All can help but laugh at Tak Takenichi's remark, saying, it changed a little bit. Tak Takenichi say, nope, just, just your hairstyle. Yes, yes, and now so if him and, if him and Akun go, can go talk on the roof, Akun would nod. Not gonna mean Nato would nod. And with this, Takenichi and Akun had to head to the roof. They began talking about everything, and she Takenichi would talk about how like um uh this I don't know I don't know how to exactly phrase it. Well Akun, Akun just talks about how in this one he was made the main one to try to push Takenichi in the track so he beat the hell out of all of them. And well they agree with that. Well, not agree, but like, like, should say, oh, it's a little, it's a little weird. I didn't see your face. I can, I can help but laugh, saying, yeah, 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 you knocked us all, all out so fast that you didn't realize it. So, yeah. But Takamichi does eventually end up deciding that, like, well, well, first off, that Akun, the Akun, like, he, he, he'll, he'll willingly protect Akun if he leaves Tomon. But Akun says he's, he's too scared of Kazaki and, and, and would rather die. And she does talk like, Takamichi if he'll kill him. And Takemichi then says that he's not, not willing to let more or less, like, kill him on the roof. Akun stands on the roof saying, push me. Or, like, on the ledge. Takemichi delivers a very, like, very swift blow to Akun, like, Akun's temple, making him knock out. And Akun falls off, and he dies. This she does hurt Takemichi to see such a nice guy be, be intimidated by Tomon, be forced to work for them. Takemichi then turns turn around, staring down, staring at Kisaki. Kisaki uses shock that Chaka Takemichi was able, was able to see him there. Takemichi then picks up a rock, throwing it right at, right at Kisaki as hard, as hard and fast as he can, hitting Kisaki right in the eye, making blood splatter everywhere. Kisaki had Campbell crawl away, and Takemichi's going to chase him, but he already, he already went, up, went down the, uh, the ladder. And as he got down there, well, he kicked it right back up, and the ladder was now stuck. So, yeah. And Takemichi is not going to jump down there and kill him. So, yeah. This he is back inside, telling, that, telling him that Kisaki was on the roof. And this one, like, this one, like, this one, like, uh, I say it, uh, fuck. This one, like, now, now, to just say, oh, to, to, would you get him? And Takamichi says that he threw a rock into his skull. He's not dead yet, but he's, but he's bleeding from his eye. And that he, well, not accidentally, but he said that he killed Akun. So, yeah. But eventually with this, well, Takamichi is back to the past. Doesn't wake up with Emma on top of him, but wakes up with Emma trying to convince him to, more or less, do things to her. And he says no, and actually she's very big similarities between her and Manjiro, saying, Are you, are, are, are you Sano's sister? She's not saying, are you talking about Mikey? He's not saying, yeah. He says, yeah, so what? Takamichi decides, saying, all right, leave me alone. He walks off, eventually, eventually ends up meeting up with Hina, and he then like, well, gets a call from Mikey, and he, he's, he's going to go to the meeting, and he goes goes with him. So, yeah. And this is the meeting. Well, Pachi and Peon don't really try to try to like talk to him, and the third division went quiet the moment Takemichi, Takemichi showed up, and they were the loud ones. And the moment Takemichi showed up, everyone realized that third division went quiet, and, well, Michi was able, able to read the situation really quickly, because he wasn't told that third division got beat up by Takemichi. The whole third division. Not all of them, but most of them did. The weaker, the weaker ones stayed back. But other visions are able, are able to read it pretty quickly that Takamichi's the one that beat them up. Beat them all up. And, well, well, Baji, Baji, Baji speak up as, 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 as getting Takamichi. Like, like where's, the, where's the gang that he had that beat up their division? Takamichi holds up his hand saying, right here and right there. But you can't help but laugh. And Takamichi does actually ask Baji. Baji, like, like, why do you care? And, well, with this, well, Baji then says, I don't, I don't believe you. Takemichi responds to Baji and body slams him. Saying then, then, then says, Arthur, I don't care about that. 
body's unconscious, and Dr. Takamichi would walk up to the stairs saying, now, if anyone, if, if anyone, wants, if anyone wants to pick another fight, like, he's up to the plate to fight every, the whole division of them, of them, like, he's able to fight the whole first division, he'll fight the rest of the, the third division, he'll fight them all again and win. He'll fight the fifth division, the fourth division, third division, not third division, second division. He'll fight them all if he wants to. And Mikey's and Darkin's jaw dropped that, dropped that Baji was knocked out from a simple slam. Now they got a grasp of how physically strong Takamichi was. So, yeah. But, um, Mikey just announces that Takamichi is his friend, and that if they pick a fight with him, they pick a fight with Manjiro. Tree's just, like, just his jaw is just, like, like on the floor, that, that Baji's unconscious in front of him like that. But eventually with this, we basically just see Takemichi saying, I'm not your friend. Mikey says, oh, why not? Takemichi then says, I'm only friends with friends of people who I think deserve it, or if I can get, get, something, get something out of it. That's when Baji, being, not Baji, but Mikey being thinking, saying, hmm, how do I say it? Uh, hmm, what can I give you? Takemichi being thinking about how, we, about how we should infiltrate Tomon, and says, how about just replacing Tomon will do for now? But within a month, if I'm not at least a, cap a captain, then I'm leaving. Mikey would not say, all right then, hmm, how about this? You're going to be playing Baji's division. You two are, are, are pretty similar. Doc Mitsu then steps down and is in now is in the, first, in the first division. Mitsu leaves over saying he'll, saying he'll make him a sweater later, or a jacket later. Doc Mitsu meets you guy five, and with that, well, now Hawkeye will question Doc and how he knows Mitsuya. And Misa just says, oh, we have, we have, we have a, few, a few classes together. So, yeah. Now with this, we'll go over the whole Mobius thing. Takamichi does realize that, well... Well, first off, he did hear that Draken had died from... Me not from Mitsuya, but from Akun. And she just realized that the Mobius incident could be the whole reason that, well... It can be the reason that... I guess, uh... How say this? It could be the main reason why Draken dies. When Takamichi hears about, hears about what they do... Even if there's an overwhelming presence, and well, Pachi actually questions what Takamichi's mad. He's actually mad on behalf of Tomon now. Takamichi then says, actually says that he's willing to tell everyone a story about how he got involved with delinquents. Tells him about how his friend got involved with his cousin, actually. They hear about how he died, they do these delinquents taking it too far. And Takamichi is willing to more or less go, go to the Mobius base and kill them all if, if, if Mikey, Mikey were to ask for it. Everyone is shocked that, Mikey, that Takamichi is willing to kill delinquents, and he says that he hates them personally. He's joining during Tomon because 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 meets you mainly. It's, it's a lie, honestly, but yeah. At least Hina had never never heard that story of his cousin being killed, but Takamichi isn't one to lie. So with this, Waiki then says that they're supposed to fight as a group, not as just Takamichi going all going all out at once. Takamichi then, Takamichi then says that he's he's willing to was up in a place like get somewhere to, that, where they can fight Mobius, but. Where they fight would be very, very, very beneficial to him and Mikey's fighting style, so it would be a completely, completely dominant fight. When they hear this, they hear this, they agree to that, or Mikey agrees to it. Takamichi would more or less go out and investigate some fighting spots, and decides on it's a decent sized alleyway, and well, the nearest, the nearest, the nearest police station is miles away. So he calls back Mikey, tells him about, tells him about this, and well, now the fight is decided with with Osunai. Well, Draken's able to find where Osanai is, and she tell Osanai they want to fight there, like all of Tomon versus Mobius. It essentially shocks Saki that Tomon picked the fight with Mobius, or, well, Mobius did, but then Mikey is the one that wants to decide where they fight. And, well, well, well Osanai was skeptical, but Osanai is being a cocky bastard, and is able to figure out that this is where they should fight. So with this, well, Saki immediately is able to tell from a distance that this is the fight that's mainly dominant for Manjiro and Takenichi, if only knows of them. There's that this, this is probably a fight that Majiro knew was knew was going to happen, and since this is so well dominant for my for my Takemichi's fighting styles, it'd work. Maybe it's just a very open area, no matter where you go. Even if you're surrounded by guys, it's a very open space, so just, they have they have free range of their movements. Fight starts with Takemichi putting on his Tomon jacket as him and him and Mitsuya have a sewing class together, and they're both pretty good at it. So well, well, well Mitsuya is great. Takemichi is just pretty good. They're able to, able to make him like a bomber jacket with Tomon logo on it. With this, he then dashes forward as Osanai is like, like, kill all Tomon. But Takamichi then grabs Osanai by the face and slams his head right into the pavement, kind of just making it crack open. As blood, blood then goes, and goes along the ground. Then Takamichi proceeds to more or less just kick away people. 
keeps on kicking and punching them all away. But eventually, he's done. He took down half, took, took down half, around half the guys, plus Osai himself. Now, Kazaki knew Takemichi was strong, but this strong was something he's never even thought of. So, yeah. But eventually, Mikey, Mikey's able to somewhat just kick out one guy that seemed to be the quote-unquote second in command. But then the rest of Tomo just completely dominated, dominated the fight. And well, Pachin had thanked Takemichi for taking out Osunai, and he says that he's doing, doing that for Pachin's bud and his girlfriend, and their parents. He's not, he's, not, he's not doing it for Pa, he's doing it, doing it for his friends and the friend's family. Now with this, Pa's, Pa took a picture, sent it to his friend, and the friend sent it to the girlfriend's family, saying, they're, they're saying there's one guy he knows that's not, that's not fond, fond of delinquents, and who he did, did, did this to the guys that did that, that did the horrible thing to your daughter. Parents and I hope would be happy about that one person doing it to their, doing to their, uh, their daughter's assaulters. Pause. Alright, so, with this, well, this mainly takes takes down the Mobius incident, but, well, they would want revenge later on. So with this, we can go on, and just fast forward a bit, through most things, Takamichi, well, first off, Mikey and Jackie don't fight, because Pachin's never arrested. But, instead, Pachin actually wants to take a break, wants to take a break from delinquent life, because, well, well, he, his friend got hurt pretty badly, and it's more or less just going to take care of his friend. And he actually asked Payon to step up to step up and be the leader of their division, but Payon says he can't. Well, Mikey actually then says, dude, Takamichi picking an area where everyone and Toon can be more dominant, or be a more dominant fighting force. He wants Takamichi to be the third division leader, as Pachin would lead, would take a lead, take like a, I guess a temporary leave of absence. With that, Takamichi agrees, saying, sure. And with this, he leaves, he leaves first division, joining, joining third as a leader. Well, all third can respect this because he's proven his power. He's proven it, and has proven that he's actually, actually actually really good at leadership. He's he's smart enough and strong enough for Manjiro to even respect respect his choices. So next we can move on to the festival. And the festival, well, Hina does ask Takemichi to go. Takemichi to go with her, and he agrees. Takemichi, the festival is kind of wearing a basic white shirt, some 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 sweatpants, and some sandals. Now Emma's more or less like she thinks Takemichi's hotter than Draken, but likes Draken's personality a bit more. But Hina doesn't know Takemichi a bit more, so she doesn't know he's not always serious when he's being rude. That's why that's why Emma doesn't, doesn't like him as much as Draken. Like, like if he wasn't wasn't as rude, then then she would like him more than Draken, which is shocking, but th- th- that's the truth. Eventually, Takemichi, well, for the grand prize thing, he has to figure out it's rigged still, and she tells the guy that if, if he doesn't unrig it, he'll kill him. Guy un- unrigs the thing, and Takemichi properly wins. So with this, Takemichi does eventually end up like um. What was it? So, what it was is more or less Takemichi saying that, um... Hmm. How do I say this? Takemichi would nonetheless still get a call from Mitsuya, but him and Hina more or less do the, the whole um, kiss thing. And then eventually, like, he, like, they don't, they, they, they don't, he's not tied up, but Takemichi then moves on to more or less, like, try to find, well, try to find Draken. But it's more or less, more or less Mobius is targeting him to get to Mikey, they think Takemichi was like like Captain not Draken anymore. That's why they're trying to get to him to get to Mikey. So yeah, they're they're doing they're they're doing they're doing it to get to Mikey, but under Osunai's command. Then Hanna's still leading them. Takemichi is going is going through the like the woods just to find him, and well he sees Kiyomasa saying that he wants to kill Takemichi. Takemichi then jumps out of nowhere, throwing a giant rocket at Kiyomasa's head, hitting Kiyomasa right in the head, making blood splatter out a bit every not almost, not everywhere but a lot. So with this, Takemichi would land, and then say, Alright, if you guys want to kill me, come at me. Go up knives, pull him out, and be attacking Takemichi with one guy from Mobius. And that one guy from Mobius says, Wait, no, no, I, I, I didn't know this guy, this guy was Takemichi. But they're, all the guys are too lazy, they're all knocked out immediately. The one guy from Mobius is then picked up by his neck and strangled. He's not dead, but he's unconscious now. Pause. So, um, well, Takemichi eventually runs off to find out where Draken is. But he made one fatal mistake. He forgot to pick up their knives. He left them behind. And the thing is, well, Kiyomasa, like, he didn't get knocked out. It was just, he's laying down with his blood coming from his head. He's not unconscious, just hurting. But just like Michi would find Draken. In fact, there's some time for him to be hit in the head with a bat. Like Michi would block the kick. Not block the kick, but block the attack with his kick. Or it gets fended off. And Draken would definitely thank Takemichi. Notice he was basically just dominating every bit of the... 
of the forces that came there, he defeats the most of them by, by himself. And he's like, 20 guys is my limit. Technically, she's like, all right then, a thousand, a thousand is my limit. So, yeah. Beats up basically everyone there. All right, where was I? Oh, yeah, so. I think she defeats most of the Mob Mobius members. There's just not that much of them there. Eventually, Hanma and his group arrive, right as most of Tomon arrives. The Takamichi sees who's leading Tomon, or Tomon, but sees who's leading Mobius. Immediately, everyone realizes Takamichi has officially lost it. There's a lot of, a lot of murder, murder and attack coming off of him. And the moment Hanma sees Takamichi, he doesn't know who he is, but feels he feels he, he, he's familiar. Takamichi would let out roar in anger at, ha yes, at Hanma's presence. And dashes right through most of the members of Mobius, jumping right over them, and towards Hanma. Punches two guys for Hanma to block as Hanma's quickly hit like right in the jaw. Hanma sent flying back, and Takamichi basically just proceeds to wail on Hanma with all of his might. So with this, he knocks out Hanma, Hanma after around a few hundred punches. Well, Hanma's already asleep, he, stopped, he was just staying up. So, yeah. But eventually with this, he delivers one punch to the, to the chin of... Oh, just chin up the cheek of Hanma, knocking out cold. And with this, well, Takamichi officially defeated Hanma. But he's not going to avenge his cousin unless he kills it. Before he does, Mikey grabs Takamichi, saying that Takamichi will be able to do something will be able to do be able to do something before he kills him. Like, like he'll be able to be able to avenge his cousin in some other way, just killing him isn't, isn't the right way. So yeah. Eventually he just goes on to defeat more and more members of Mobius. Eventually, Takemichi had lost his shit at Hama getting him back up again. He grabs Hama by the, the collar. Hama suddenly wraps, 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 wraps his arms around Takemichi, saying, Do it! Suddenly, suddenly a blade will in, plunge into the back of Takemichi. So Take Takemichi will cut out blood, as now he knows what he yelled for Takemichi, or just yell Hanagaki. Mikey then stares towards Takemichi, realizing Tomono ran up the knife, stabbing Takemichi again. Takemichi is officially then stabbed twice. This Takemichi fall over, coughing up blood. And he pulls the knife out of his back, stands ending up. It looks, it looks like Kimasa and his random henchman. Stabbing the henchman right in the arm and the other one right in the gut. Or stabbing Kimasa right in the gut. And he yells that a bunch of knives aren't going to stop him, so come at him. Initially, the ambulance arrives, and Takamichi's coughing up blood like, 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 there's, like there's no tomorrow. And initially, he's going to be put in the ambulance, and he's healed. So, uh, yeah. But eventually, with this. We go on to see Takemichi in the hospital when he, when he wakes up. It's been around two, three days. When he wakes up, uh, Mikey, Mikey basically just crying in his seat. And well, so is Pachin. As Pachin is very grateful to Takemichi. Mikey, Mikey's mother's crying that Takemichi is laying down his life for Tomon and he recently just joined. Which he's laying, laying, laying down his life for his own personal re reasons, but also for some, re for, for some reasons of Tomon. So, yeah. But eventually with this, well, he tells, he tells Mikey, stop being a baby and stop crying, as he stands up, and is able to put on his clothes. Then the nurse would walk, walk in, saying, wait, no, 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 you can't do that yet. But the technician's like, no, I, stay, I, I don't need to stay in bed much longer. So, yeah. So eventually with this, Takamichi would just more or less move on to just, it's like, he still becomes a delinquent legend, still feeding most of Mobius single-handedly, while still having two knives in his back. Or two stab wounds in his back. But we'll go to Takamichi in the future, who kind of saved Hina by taking the taking, taking the wounds, but originally supposed to be Draken who did die, but Takamichi developed a lot more hatred. Like, he also hated Takamichi a little bit more than Draken even, so, yeah. But with this, we can move on to see, just in the future, Emma's alive. Not, I mean, Hina's, well, Emma is alive. She's no, probably not. So, Hina's the one alive. And Takamichi still able to more or less like, um, how do I say this? Um, he I guess he just talks to. Um, wait, let me call it one more time. Sorry. So Takamichi still a legend. He's about the future. Meets meets em, not Emma. Meet Tina. As meet Tina, well, um, Hino is more or less shocked that Takamichi is like yes. How do I say this? Well, she hasn't seen him for years, and they still did break up. But it's more or less due to Hina breaking up Takemichi with his violent nature against other gangsters. Well, her father heard about it and didn't like it. It made Hina break, break up Takemichi because he couldn't get in contact with Takemichi. And when he did, Takemichi ignored him, not caring who he was. But Hina doesn't actually end up saying, like, like just like just says she'd like to meet Takemichi again. And that she regrets breaking up with him. 
And eventually head to the bathroom. And we're again, kind of nervous because for the first time he's showing emotion. So, yeah. Or another emotion besides anger or sarcasm. Sarcasm is an emotion, but still. Pretty, yes, it can be, uh, be an emotion for some people. But with this, Takamichi eventually ends up going on to, um... Ends up going on to just go to the bathroom, so eventually he sees Hanma in there. Hanma is just pretty nervous, so he's shaking. Takamichi almost killed him the last time they met. Takamichi shows Hanma dead in the eyes. Anthony says, you have some nerve coming in here. Hanma swing back, saying, please don't kill me. Takamichi Jack tackles Hanma, and as an adult, beats Hanma to death. So... Yeah. And this year runs out of the bathroom running for Tina, saying, Damn it, where is she? He's there, is about to pull her out of the car. He's like, No, come on, come on, come on. The, well, the truck slams into her, into the car, well, into the car, Tina's about to get out. Then she crushes Tina, immediately killing her on impact. The car kind of, the car kind of, kind of, kind of compressed on her body. So, yeah. Taking Michi's eyes widen as, well, he's left, he's left speechless, and he just falls over, just out of sheer shock, and is unconscious. Mishu and Nato arrives. He sees Takamichi's eyes wide, wide open with his jaw dropped. Then sees Hina halfway out of the car with her body crushed. Nato, Nato then knows why Takamichi's like this. It's led to basically just, like, Takamichi died getting, trying to get Hina to safety. So, yeah. But eventually with this, Takamichi eventually does wake up. And the first thing he's greeted with is having to be at Hina's funeral. He has to go. He goes there in a suit, and everyone just goes questioning who he is. He and his father's the one person that are like, like, why aren't you here? You're probably the reason he's de- she's dead. He reaches turn and drown, knowing that he's the reason that him and Hina broke up. Taking she's response, punches him in the face as hard as he can, and him flying halfway across the room. Thinking that if you let her keep dating him, he could have protected her, but no, he just had to be, had to be a dick and take her away from him. Taking she turns and drown, but bawling his eyes out. And eventually, he has to guess go, go back to the future. Not past, not future, it is like the past. But, uh, yeah. Pause real quick. So Takamichi is heads back to the past. And when he heads back to the past, he eventually has to go go, go, to, go to another Tomon meeting. This meeting, well, Takamichi's kind of just in shock. As he did, the, the, like, was alerted that the driver was Akun, and Akun's family, well, family was missing. So, yeah. But eventually, we just kind of, we have to go, have to go on to Takamichi and the Tomon meeting. But, um... So I'm meeting the first division, not first, but third division, no, not, no, not third. First off, like, Kasaki's now as a member of Tobon being put under third division. Takamichi walks up, walks up to, like, walks up to, uh, freaking Kasaki, but tells Payon to come with him. As they're walking up, Takamichi able to mumble only loud enough for Payon to hear, saying that Kasaki's a bad person, who wants, like, he's the one that, that had Takamichi stabbed. Well, he's the one that had Takamichi stabbed, and he works with Hanma. This pan immediately, immediately grab, would grab Kasaki by the collar, hitting him in the face as hard as he can, knocking him out immediately. This time, he kicks Kasaki right in the gut, saying, Wake up. He stares right down at Kasaki, and Mikey asks question what he's doing. That time, he should say that Mikey better stop him, or he'll, or he'll kill, he will kill Kasaki in front of everyone. No one believes him until he begins, begins beating Kasaki to death. Eventually, everyone has to pull Takami off of him. Suddenly, Baji grabs Takami to the collar, trying to hit him in the face, saying, This is revenge. But Takamichi breaks everyone off of him, grabbing Baji, picks him up by the by his neck, saying that he, he, he'll kill everyone here if he needs to, but Kasaki has to leave someone immediately. Kasaki's kind of nervous, when suddenly Takamichi slams his foot down on, ta- on, ta- on Kasaki's chest, almost breaking most of his ribs. Kasaki coughs out blood, and asks for mercy, but Takamichi then says, no one who, 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 who works with Hanma is allowed near him. When everyone hears that, that hears that Kasaki works with Hanma, they immediately begin yelling at Mikey for letting him in. Like, they're yelling at Mikey. Mikey knows that Takamichi will actually kill Kasaki because he works with Hanma. So, this immediately... Yeah, pause one more time, sorry. So, uh, everyone realizes that Takamichi will seriously kill Kasaki, and maybe even Baji. So, which if we would have shot Takamichi on save Baji's life, Takamichi's able to, like, basically just push... Not push Kasaki, but push... Um, to fill you away, or, like, throw him away by basically kicking him almost over the whole crowd of tone numbers. But he throws Baji to the ground, and then kick, kicks Kasaki in the face, knocking him out. With this, Takamichi eventually ends up telling Mikey that he'll leave Tomon, or else, like, he'll, he'll leave Tomon, or Kasaki can leave Tomon. One of the two. With that, Kasaki's kicked right out of Tomon, his jacket is taken away from him, and his plans went right out the window through Takamichi hating him. I guess even for Hina, it's for, it's for his cousin. 
By the way, Takamichi's cousin, like, if you've read How to Fight and why I say Hoon hates gangsters mainly, you will, you know why if you've read How to Fight and up to tell you in the backstory. Takamichi's cousin happened to be that same person who had the same kind of incident. So, yeah. Moving to with this, well, everyone's in shock, but Takamichi eventually would go to school the next day. And, well, he's in class with Takamichi while his, while his, yes, his quote unquote subordinates walk in. Or they'd be talking. Takamichi wants to know about wants to know about Valhalla because Hamna still did announce it before he's beaten up. As in the past, not as an adult, because Ta- 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 Takamichi killed him as an adult, but yeah. But uh, eventually, Takamichi is like just told about Valhalla when Mikasura walks in. Mikasura tries to like just say, "Oh, Hanagaki, ah, we me 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 and you knew, knew, knew each other in the first years." Takamichi said, "Just called called called, 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 called called him the lame kid with a neck tattoo." That's where says, yeah, that's me. That means he says, get out. That's where says, oh, why should I? And he says, because you're making Mitsu uncomfortable. And if you're making him uncomfortable, something is different. He immediately says he's a final member of Tomon, and he killed Mikey's brother. That means you sigh, saying, so even Tomon has, has, the, has the gangsters like that. Immediately with this, Katsuro would rush to Kimichi. And saying, don't associate me with, don't associate with me with Tomon, or associate me with Tomon. Then the Kasura's grabbed, the, grabbed by the neck, and slammed right through a table. This is like Michi being, being, being uh, tutorial almost to death in the middle of the classroom, but stopping before he loses his last breath. That's where his guys walk in the classroom with Akun kicking their broken legs, and they fall to the ground holding their legs, like quite just in pain. Like Michi picks up, picks up, picks up the sword saying, alright, alright, dust yourself off, then get out of my classroom. That's for uh, would, 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 would walk away saying, Kisuke Bachi is going to kill right hand man Shifuyu. Takashi then looks at Misu saying, Who the hell's Bachi? And then suddenly, there's some, there's some, there's some like, comes through, like, You don't even know who he is, and you're in Tomon. Takashi says, I'm, I'm pretty recent, I don't, I don't care, I'll care about most of the members. I don't they impress me. There's some, there's some Misu's like, The, the, the guy, the guy, the guy you, you choked out last night. Takashi says, Oh, loud mouth, that guy. Uh, fine, I'll, I'll help him. Now at this he walks walks or walks, walks to the Valhalla base with um with Kazura, but does say if Han was there, he he will kill basically everyone in Valhalla if he needs to. As he gets there, well eventually with this, well, he sees Baji beating up Chifuyu, but he he, he recognizes Chifuyu. That he grab Baji Baji basically by his hair and slam his head right into the ground, saying, Alright, um that's where I would say would you say his name was again? And so Chifuyu says uh, Chifuyu, but Kazura then says Uh I think it's in Shifuyu or something? Because we're just in amazement that Takemichi doesn't care about who they are. Takemichi pulls up Shifuyu saying, Alright, get up and walk out. With this, they walk out, and Hamlin says, Who do you think you are in interrupting this process? When everyone realizes that, that well, Kazutora's covered in blood and bruises, there's Takemichi's unscathed. This body just is picked up by Takemichi, and he's walking out. Suddenly a guy would rush at Takemichi, but Takemichi, Takemichi, Takemichi just kicks him all to the ground, and then... He beat up most members of Valhalla until he gets to Hanma, and Kazutora are the last ones left. That then punches, punches, punches Kazutora in the face as hard as he can, breaking his jaw and knocking out a few teeth. Then he does the same thing to Hanma, and he mumbles one thing that gets to catch the eyes of a barely conscious Bachi. I already, already, I already, I already murdered you as an adult, I have no qualms doing it again as a kid. But, I guess, I guess you can change. I hope. Walks out to see Kasaki standing in the doorway in shock, but Chifuyu picks up a pipe hitting Kasaki in the back of the head, saying, Stay out. Or stay away from us. That took me to then step on Kasaki, crouching to get out of the doorway, and tells Chifuyu, Good job. Chifuyu would hold Baji as they go as they go to Mikey's house, with the help of um with the help of Baji guiding them, he's who's barely even conscious. When they get there, well, my old Mikey answers the door with Draken, who's doing his hair. And Draken's just yelling, Stay still, Mikey! They see Takamichi towering over them, and then they see Baji being held by Chuyu. Chuyu's pretty badly beaten up, but Baji's head is just bleeding. And they, ask, they ask if Takamichi did the Baji. And Chuyu then says, Yeah, but Baji honestly deserved it. Then they go inside the with Baji's face being bandaged up, or his forehead mainly, and Chuyu's face is bandaged up. And while Baji reveals everything they tried to do, even investing in Kasaki, just to know if he was really like, a true member of Tomon or a true member of Valhalla, just ch- basically check on Takamichi if he's right or wrong. But, um, yeah. But eventually with this, Takemichi would eventually end up, like, how do you say this, um, 
Well, he just ends up basically saying that saying that he should, that he he should have hit Baji in the head harder or slammed his head in the ground harder. So Baji couldn't speak because Baji was did deserve to be knocked out for doing that to Shifuyu, who was his right hand man and kind of kind of his best friend. But actually, with this, well, Kimichi does eventually just say he's he's kind of bored, so he's just gonna go home. But eventually, he ends up going to see Hina and then go, goes to the back to the past. In the past, he meets Naoto, brings him to Death Row or like basically the area for Death Row. Takemichi does actually reveal it to Naoto he killed Hanma. But the thing is, they didn't find Hanma's body. Someone in the quality just came from Tomon, picked up the body, and moved it. Like, before Naoto arrived, someone from Tomon picked up the body and moved it. And so now Naoto's like, oh, that's why he hasn't done any crimes recently. You killed him. Takemichi was not saying, yep, beat him to death. In seconds, actually. I thought, I thought someone, someone so strong as him would put up, would put up more of a fight. So, yeah. But eventually Takemichi ends up going on, and with this, well, he talks to Draken, who reveals the whole Valhalla incident. But tells Takemichi that they were actually, they won pretty easily, it was just, he did such, such a number on them that, well, he did such a number on them that they did it pretty easily. But, wait, pause, sorry. But Takemichi eventually ends up basically just talking to Draken, and he's like, oh yeah, like, you did a number on them, so they were pretty weak. Thing is, they were out there, they brought weapons, they brought knives, bats, um, they brought knives, bats, four, two by fours. Everything you can imagine, just not guns, because I guess they can get those, but we're lucky they didn't bring any of them. Like you'd say, so is that is that so yes, one, but he said we said you won. Draken says, We won in honor in a fight we lost. They had so many weapons that some of us even got stabbed. Draken holds up a shirt revealing that he has a few stab wounds. It's like, it's like you'd say, it doesn't look too serious. Draken can say they weren't, but it took a little long time for them to heal. And Draken can help but laugh, saying that he actually has, has more stab wounds than Takamichi. And that's when realized Takamichi was stabbed. He forgot. He, he looked up back at Takamichi's shirt, seeing the two stab wounds, saying, I forgot about that. So, yeah. But eventually, Draken reveals that he should have killed Kasaki because Kasaki was just like someone who. Hmm. How do I say it? Uh, I don't know. I, I, I guess that he would more or less just, like, I guess like the same thing where he just leaves, wanting to go to the past, but, um, what's the next part? I guess it would be, be like, the war between Tomon and Valhalla. And Takamichi doesn't know what he needs to do here is either kill Kasaki if, he's, if he shows up, probably not, he has broken ribs, but kill, kill Kasaki or kill Hanma, because that, that, that was not the plans, majorly. And before the war starts, he go, go, goes to Sano, fan of Sano family grave because Baji told him what happened about, about Shinichiro, everything. But well, he's there, he meets Mikey and Draken. And Takamichi basically tells Mikey and Draken that Kasaki is a horrible person who has plans to basically just manipulate every single thing that Toman does. And with that, the fight, if Kasaki shows up, he'll kill him or kill Hanma. With this, everyone's more or less like, well, Mikey and Draken are like chocolate Takamichi would do so, but then again, he hates them both. He sits down, saying he, can't, saying he can't tell them tell them the truth just yet, or the full truth. But in the future, Tomon's an organization that should never that should never exist. They they like Kasaki ruined Tomon in the future. As the future when Takamichi went to, even even with a badly injured Kasaki from in the past, he's still able to join Tomon and like uh absorb it due to beating Tomon. So, yeah. But with this we go on to see Takamichi. Who would end up having to fight? Um, I guess just I guess before the fight even starts, we just we should go on to. How do I keep forgetting what I'm trying to say? It's happened so many times in this video. But we should go on to basically just the fight starts because we're just in front. You just try to knock out Hansen, but technically she's the one representing. So then what? How does Hansen start to like knock out Hansen? He blocks the first punch and stops like the second one, saying that Hansen is pretty weak. So then tries and says, that, fine, we don't even overshare, it's going to be a slaughter. And like, she's aware of Baji still dying in this fight. Has where he gangs up on him and stabs Kasutora. Not Kasutora, I mean, stabs Baji, but yeah. But before he does, well, suddenly, Kasutora is smacked into the air, or looking just like, yes, uppercutted in the air. Then quickly, a knife is taken from his pocket. And like, she puts it in his own pocket, saying that, that he's, he's going to kill anyone who has a knife. And he pulls out his knife and stares down at everyone who's there, saying, oh. Didn't, 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 didn't recognize a lot of you. These are the Haitani brothers, Lean Men, and Hansen. Those are all canonical characters, don't worry. 
And he basically says that he beat them all up previously because they were horrible gangsters. Also, then they give him a Sakamichi in a gang outfit. And uh, not, not, not another did Lean Man, or, or Lean Man, or the Haitani Brothers. But Sakamichi said that several the Haitani Brothers, Haitani Brothers, saying that he's willing, willing to fight them, fight them if they want to join in. And with this, they more or less just say, nope, we're good. So, yeah. Takamichi eventually just rushes into the fight, and is able to, like, someone has a knife and runs at him. Takamichi just pulls out his knife that he took, like, took from the torso, stabbing the guy right in the leg, then kneeing him in the face, knocking him out. Now, he then says, alright then, well, that will be the first gate to get you off to pass. If you're able to overwhelm me or get past me, then, then you can fight Tomon, but until then, you're going to fight me. Everyone runs to, runs to Takamichi, and Leanman, Hansen, and the Time Brothers all say, Valhalla's gonna die. The Sakamichi kicks down basically everyone he needs to, even slamming them into the pavement, even hitting them with their weapons, and breaking multiple bones over and over and over. By the time he's done, it takes around 15 minutes, and he defeated everyone. And the thing is, Hanma's the one, Hanma and, and, and Kisaki didn't show up. Well, left, left is Katsutora, who just kind of just, like, just, like, crawling away from Takamichi. Mikey would get on top of Katsutora, trying to you know, hit, him, hit him in the face, saying that he basically happened it already, he'll finish the job. That, Mikey suddenly picked up by Takamichi by his hair, and then slammed right into the pavement, being knocked out. That, Takamichi just sighs, saying, so, so I guess this really was too easy. With that, he then throws Mikey, throws Mikey to the rest of Tomon, and the cops then begin arriving. Like he immediately pulls like pulls his hood, well, so his jacket over his, over his I guess over his head, so his face isn't seen. Then covers up Kazutora as he runs off with Kazutora. Now with this, we end up going on to Takamichi's house. We see Kazutora waking up covered in ice packs, and then Takamichi sitting across from him pl playing on his phone. Not his phone, but he's playing video games. What whatever whatever was out in, in two thousand five or two thousand four. You know, so twelve years ago. I guess like, like, like um two thousand five. Let me check that real quick. Takamichi is just showing up at home, playing, 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 playing his PS2. When Kazutora would wake up, questioning why he's here. All to, all to talk, Takamichi would say is that he wasn't, he wasn't going to let him get arrested. So Kazutora then asks, if, like, 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 what about what about Los Valhalla? And Takamichi says, probably in juvenile detention. But everyone else escaped, except for the members of Valhalla. My mind is Kazutaki and Hanma. So, we're going to leave off this part with Kazutora and Takamichi about to have a talk, and probably Kazutora joining, joining Tomon. Please enjoy, like, and subscribe, comment, comment for the next part, which would conclude the series. Bye-bye. Um,